You're listening to Melissa Gorga on display with me, Melissa Gorga, on Podcast One. Spend less time in the laundry room and more time doing the things you love. Introducing the Samsung Smart Top Load Laundry Pair, now available at Lowe's. The washer's large capacity means you can fit more in every load. Plus, its super speed setting washes a full load in only 28 minutes. Shop the smart washer that will streamline laundry day, backed by Lowe's Price Promise. Based on using super speed on a normal cycle with an 8-pound low, terms apply. See Lowe's.com slash price promise for details. U.S. only. I know this sounds like lame, but I don't have regrets because I, I enjoy learning from my mistakes. And I think I've had a lot of them. And I think that I, you don't learn unless you, you know, you have some of those. So I can't say I regret anything because I wouldn't be where I am now. All right, guys, I'm super excited about this one. She is a famous content creator. You know her from the fashion videos and the realistic clothing hauls. Um, She has made quite a name for herself in the fashion world by being real and just embracing her natural beauty. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Remy Bader. Hi, girlfriend. Thank you for having me. Thanks for coming on. I'm so excited to talk to you. First of all, let me just tell you, when you posted something yesterday that you were going to talk to me and I reposted it, my niece, Brielle, shout out to Brielle, went crazy. She's like, oh my God, I love really? her. She's uh-huh. my favorite. Tell her much I love her. So yeah, you have you have a lot of fans out there. Tell her I love her also. I'm um, sure. Thank you so much. Yeah, no, I, well, it's like weird because I... I mean, you wouldn't even remember, but when I worked at Bravo back in the day, I like met you there um, and you were doing a podcast and I was like working there and I'm like, hi, I'm Remy, but it's just like a very full circle situation. Isn't that <laughs> funny? Oh my God. So yeah. we've met before at Bravo. We've met before. Yeah. Yes. So what did you used to do at Bravo? You worked like with their, what did you do? I was the assistant to um, Jen Geyser on the PR team. Oh, I love Jen Geyser. So funny. Yeah. She's so, so fun. Yeah, she's very fun. So I was um, the assistant on the PR, like her assistant, and then also PR. So like I met, you know, all the talent and did stuff. But I also was like right out of college. And like, definitely, um, I liked it. But like, I definitely, I like, you know, when you work somewhere, and then you kind of appreciate it less for like fun, like I like stopped watching the shows as much for fun. It was more work. Right. And, then I, and then I switched over to work in music. And like, now I am back into like watching Bravo for fun. So it just was like, um, I realized that I wanted to like, TV is my escape for things. So I don't really want to work in it. But I, um, I really liked working in music. And then I got let go during the pandemic because of COVID and everything. And then that's kind of where this all happened out of nowhere because I was making TikToks for fun and it just like randomly blew up. Yeah, I learned TikTok over COVID as well. I never made one in my life and we were so bored in the house. My daughter was just always I just trying. I was like, teach me something. Let's do something. I actually have like a little rhythm inside here you somewhere. Do, you do. <laughs> I learned, and then I stopped. It was like, soon as COVID was over, I'm like, I don't have time to make TikToks. Like, I barely do them anymore. I do them once in a while. I decided I was going to do like, so as we're building this house and we start putting the tile in and the floors and people are so into like homes and stuff on TikTok and on the reels on Instagram. So I was like, I'll get back into it when, when the house is like, has something to show, you know, because we're building. Once you find a thing, I think that's what it is. If people are like gravitate towards it, it's fun to keep going, but like, and that's the same for me. If I, if the world started back up again and like TikTok wasn't like, this wasn't a plan for me. So I probably would have stopped doing TikToks too, but it ended up turning into like my full-time career, which took me for a while to actually like believe that it was real. Like I was like, am I really going to just like not go back into like everything that I've planned for my life? But like now, like now I can't even picture being back and like working in corporate. So I don't know. Yeah, because you're, you're kind of, well, listen, just speaking of finding your thing for the listeners that aren't familiar with your content. Okay. You are known for fashion videos, but I mean, not just any fashion videos, you do clothing hauls, right. From like affordable brands and you give honest opinions on the wins and on the fails and you're super, super, super funny while you do it. So like, how did this, how did this even happen? Like, where did it start? Yeah. 
I think that that's the main thing. It's like people were doing clothing hauls forever, but I feel like I was only seeing the good and not seeing the bad. And like, what, you're hiding a huge piece of something that like clearly we all, no matter what size we are, are trying on things that don't fit or don't look good. So why aren't we like showing that piece of it? And I think for me, I came across, I gained a significant amount of weight actually right before COVID just being stressed at work and stuff like that. So I was a little bit, you know, uncomfortable with myself. And then I ended up like when I lost my job and stuff, I first actually signed with a modeling agency as like a curve model, which kind of brought a little bit of my confidence back. Um, and then That's I huge. came across this like um, TikTok, you know, because it's so interesting TikTok because it's really geared towards you. So it's like, I only saw the dancing videos really during COVID and like that kind of stuff. And then all of a right. sudden one day I came across like curvy fashion hauls and like inspiration. I'm like, this is interesting. I've never seen any of these people. Why am I not on this page? Like maybe I'll do it for fun. So then I taught myself how to edit, started making like similar videos, but it wasn't until like the fourth or fifth one um, that I made that was just like really kind of speaking from my experience where I bought a big like a huge haul of clothes and I tried them on without being on the camera and I was just laughing at myself and I'm like oh my god like how does this stuff look this insane on me and um doesn't look like what it does online and it is my size based on what they're telling me so I decided like I'm just gonna film it and that was the first video that like went viral and people I guess related to which again I never thought would happen I just kind of kept going with it right well like you blew up and everyone does know you from TikTok and that I feel like it takes I mean you're the way you do it you're so confident and you're just so confident in your skin which I think is so refreshing and what this world really has lacked you know we're all filtering everything like crazy I mean some of these I've seen pictures lately of random friends or other housewives let me just say like then I'm like (laughs) wow like wow I get like smoothing the skin right Right. and like just giving it a little touch up but like literally change their eye color and like push the button I think they push like the one that says movie and it's like their eyes get as big as Jasmine from the Disney prince like it's it's insane so I like I applaud you for 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 doing no it really is like something special and the fact that you're so comfortable and confident um in your own skin in and just embracing your real natural beauty I mean do you ever get hate on the internet is there any is there a dark side of it um more than ever lately which is interesting I feel like as things just get bigger like the week that I was like at the Oscars announced my um line launching with Revolve and then um like did this met Khloe Kardashian like did all this stuff in one week like someone found something for every single possible thing to just make something so like different like why is a TikToker at the Oscars like I announced the Revolve line and then there was you know I'm going right now it's it's launching in the fall and it's going to be up to it's their first line that's going to be above an XL so it's going to a 3x and then I also wanted to make it inclusive so it starts at extra extra small like I didn't want it to just be larger and I got so much heat for that just being that like it didn't go up to a 6x and it's like you know I got a million TikTok videos of people being like you shouldn't be representing these brands. You're not fat enough. You're fat phobic. You even complain that you don't love your body all the time. It's like, I never planned, again, I never planned to be on TikTok, but if I'm going to and making this, like, I'm going to always be honest and I'm going to always be real with myself. So there are days that I'm always like, like lately I've been like a little uncomfortable in my body and I don't know why now and not, you know, like it's like, but I, I will always, I'll never go online and just like pretend. So I'll tell my followers about that. And I think that that's, best so like my followers don't think I'm like this fake person that isn't like dealing with what everyone else is and that since other people are taking that as like I'm fat phobic it's like I can't win but I think a little bit lately it's just been a, a lot like it's just been sometimes I can't take I'm sensitive and I I also it's like I have two sides of me because sometimes I'm like I don't give a shit. And, I'll, and I you're really like, screw you. This is me. Right. And there's other times that you're like, but you know, that's why that's what makes you human. That's what makes yeah. you relatable. And that's honestly what makes you so real. I mean, listen, they're always going to knock you down. The bigger you get, the more they come for you. Right. And it's a sad world that we live in, but you know, you have to take that with a grain of salt. You almost need to be like, you know, 
I made it, I guess. Once you have haters, you're doing, you know, you, you've made it in this world. And it's sad, but true because we live in the world of social media where, you know, Bob Schmo can be home behind his computer, you know, saying the most horrible things, obviously. And it's, 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 a, it's really terrible that when people yeah. are at their best and people like you who are being super vulnerable, super open with everybody, that there's still like the negative comments, but but you can't let that right affect you or ever stop doing what you're doing. So like, how, have, how have you handled it? Do you, do you go back at them? Do you reply I to them? That it's always just in like phases, like late, like this week, like, like I spent my whole Saturday, like I sometimes don't even go out and see my friends anymore because I'm like, okay, I know if I go out and I don't not like it, I enjoy people coming up to me, but I know that that's going to be majority of my day. And like, I won't just say hi to someone. Like I want to take the time to talk to every single person. That's just how I am. And I also think I have like a different kind of platform where girls will come up to me like crying, saying I've changed your life. I'm not going to be like, hi, thank you. Like I want to have a conversation. So (laughs) I, I went out Saturday and I literally spent my whole entire day doing that. And I even left the day feeling so like good about myself like I was like I talked to all these amazing people all this stuff and some freaking girl made a video like two days ago like being like that I never met and I don't know and was like I guess her friend met me and whatever and she was saying something about how like Remy Bader didn't give her the time of day or something and I said like and do you want a picture or not I've never even talked like that like I don't even say that sentence so it was like when something is a complete and full lot, I went off the other day, like not even off. Like I just, ma- I had to make a video where half my friends were like, don't respond. I'm like, no, there's a difference of people saying Remy's annoying. Remy's this, Remy's right. and it's not true. But like, if someone's, when I take the time and the effort to be there for my followers, respond to them all the time. Like I will not take someone making up a lie about me. And I think I'm in this space where I'm like, do I take a break for a little? But then I'm like, no, like I want to be present. So it's very hard. I don't know how to handle it, to be honest. Well, no. And my do not take a break. Absolutely not. Like you're inspiring way more people than are, you know, hating and whoever this is that wants to lie about you. Never, ever, ever stop. I mean, listen, you get to take a break if you're, if your mind needs the break. But yeah. I know just from when I said that I was going to even have you on the podcast, like, you are inspiring to so many girls. Like we need more people like you out there for real. And Mm -hmm. you know, you can't let these people break you down. And I've learned that just on housewives, just with certain things I've wanted to say or do it's just public eye stuff. You know what I mean? But the fact that um, your whole philosophy is uh, to stay true and to stay honest um, with yourself and your audience. I think that's what makes you so likable. Yeah. Yeah. No, and and that's why I will, that I went on, like, I was just had, like, a breakdown the other day, and I was, like, hysterically crying, and then it was, it's weird, because I have all my friends, but then sometimes I feel like my friends don't get what I'm doing, because a lot of my friends are are not in this world, Um, so then I, like, bent on social media, and it's, like, I don't know, in a way, it kind of helps me, like, it's, like, sometimes I feel like my followers know me better than other people, and I know that's not true, but at the same time, I feel like that I do truly show every part of my life, like the ups, the downs, like everything, everyone's waiting to see my new apartment. Everyone know I, knows I hated my last apartment. Like it's just everything. So I know that that also I'm giving people the, like, I don't know the word, like I'm, I'm letting people be able to say whatever they want about me because I'm being so open about every single thing. Um, so I think I just need to get a little bit tougher skin somehow. <laughs> well, it comes, it comes with time. I mean, how long have you been really in the public eye at this point? It was, it's been about two years, right? Yeah. Like not even two years. Right. So it takes a minute. I used to cry under the bed for the first two years, literally like Joe would have to like pull me by my sneakers out from under the bed. I'm like, I am not going into pickup line at school. Like I'm that mom, that weirdo that's on TV that everyone thinks it's crazy that like argues with her family yeah. all day. Like I don't ever want to be seen in public again. But then as like, you'll see time will definitely change that. Being a father is a great thing, but there's no reason to have to look like a dad when you go to the gym. I know I've had to have this talk with Joe, and that's why I'm here to tell you all about 10,000. 10,000 makes the highest quality, best fitting and most comfortable training shorts he has ever worn. They have these seven inch interval shorts that have a ton of features like odor protection, no bounce pockets, breathable and lightweight shelf fabric, and a no bounce phone pocket. 
They also have these versatile shirts that are the perfect workout shirt. It's lightweight, it's breathable and durable. 10,000 believes in being better than yesterday, a dedication to continuous improvement, not overnight success. They have a team of over 200 athletes test their gear to ensure the perfect design, fabric, trims, and fit. They have free shipping and free returns and a lifetime guarantee. Father's Day is coming up, so make sure you guys treat your man, your hubby, your brother, your father to some really great 10,000 gym apparel. 10,000 is offering our listeners 15% off your purchase. Go to 10,000.cc slash Gorga to receive 15% off your purchase. That is 10,000.cc slash Gorga. Meal prepping is difficult and ButcherBox makes it easy. ButcherBox is a subscription service that takes away the hassle of finding high quality meat. ButcherBox gets their meat from partners with the highest standards for quality. No more searching the grocery store for 100% grass-fed beef, free-range organic chicken, or wild-caught seafood. Every decision they make is made holistically. They keep everyone in mind from the farmer to the planet, the animal, right to your family. I recently received my butcher box in the mail, and I cannot tell you how much of a hit this was with the family. Their free-range organic chicken really helps bring out the flavor in our chicken parmesan, and the ground beef made it incredible sauce for our spaghetti night. Every month, ButcherBox ships a curated selection of high-quality meat right to your home, and there's free shipping for the continental U.S. There are no antibiotics or added hormones, and each box contains between 8 to 14 pounds of meat. That's enough for 24 individual meals. This is your chance to never have to shop for ground beef again. That's right. ButcherBox is giving new members free ground beef for life. Sign up at butcherbox.com slash Gorga and get two pounds of ground beef free in every order for the life of your membership. Log on to butcherbox.com slash Gorga. Claim this deal. I mean, just from what you're saying, as far as like, you show so much of your personal life. Did you ever think about maybe there could be a reality show that comes out of this in the, in the making or in the works of some sort? So it's been in like, I mean, obviously people have brought it up to me, but I see, and I like thought people, everyone, since I was at like one of the summer house parties on like one episode of the show, like all people say is like, please be on summer house and this and this. And I'm like, this is my thing about it is like, I feel like you've done a good job at like from the beginning, like just being you, but most people that doesn't really happen. And I, not that it doesn't happen that I feel like we know on these kinds of shows, like it can, you could turn into the villain very easily or something. And like, it freaks me out. Like there's clearly a lot of people, you know, that were like maybe the greatest that everyone loved one season and all of a sudden they're not. And I think a lot of that has to do with production, but a lot also has to, who knows what it is that freaks me out. Like, I just feel like I when I was asking around people if I'd ever do that and people always ask me about reality I'm like I just would never want to to like I don't want to be the villain you don't ever want to be the villain and I I know only you can control that so I know people say that yes there's production and there's but like if I say or do it they're gonna air it right Right. so it's if it doesn't come out of my mouth you can't air it do you know what I'm saying? So yeah, I think it's not as much like villain. It's more that since I'm so sensitive and then if I like will cry or I'm there, I'm like, I'm maybe I'm not prepared for that yet. Like, you know what I mean? It's like, if there was something that just like, since I'm so open about everything and then after the fact, I would be like, wait, maybe I don't want that to be public. Like it's too late. So it's like, I just, I don't know, but I do definitely think like I want, I did um earlier this year, like a little like hosted a little show with like Bravo that was live streamed and um with some Bravo guests and stuff and it was like a nice little like segue into it but it just made me realize like I think I do I could do something maybe hosting I could see doing something maybe like not reality but something in the tv space I think like all this for me has been like um opportunities that have come my way and I've either been like great this excites me or no I'm getting better at saying no because I don't need to say yes to everything I even had a podcast for a little and it just didn't work out and didn't feel right for you right for me and I was like great like I was excited that I learned that it doesn't mean I'll never never have a podcast again but at the time I just am trying to like 
do only things that I'm genuinely passionate about. So I'm kind of just like seeing the opportunities that come my way. And then when I get, have ideas and stuff, I always like pitch that to my team. And well, that's awesome. And the way you're doing it right now, though, I mean, you kind of have control of it all. So it's kind of nice that you're the one putting the content out there. You're the one deciding if you want to say it or do it or so, I mean, it's not the worst thing not to be on reality TV because you're in control, right? So you're like, you're leading the ship, which is a good thing. And whatever you're doing, you're doing it right. Because when we're going to talk about this moving forward, you're working with some major companies now and some major brands, which we'll get into, but I'm just curious which one was it like which TikTok was it if you had to pinpoint it that you feel like really started this like went viral and you were like whoa like where where was the first one that you were like wow something's like a little different here yeah um it was actually I don't remember when it was maybe like November December I posted the Zara haul where at the end of it I like showed like my turned around and showed my butt because the pants didn't zip and like they looked like they did in the front and I remember that like that went the most viral and like some influencers and people started commenting on it and I started freaking out and I was like with my friend I was like oh my god like freaking out and then TikTok took it down once it got to like three million views why did they do that that. why did they do that my butt was in it (laughs) <laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay. Like it was like this much of it because I was trying to show like it looks good in the front, and I was like, this isn't even zipping up my body. But yeah. then I put it up on Instagram, and it's still up like somewhere on Instagram because Instagram doesn't care. TikTok's like, <laughs> more like child proof. Right. Um, but I feel like that was it. And then also, I think it really kind of took off. I would say like I started in September, but it really took off more in January of 2021 because I feel like that's when I did this free people video that where I changed up my hauls and like instead was copying the met like the photo of the model so if they were doing something crazy I would do that exact same thing whether it was on my wall in my swimming pool like just whatever it was and that free people one like I feel like that's when brands and press started like writing about it and like that's when I was like whoa this is crazy That's crazy. What do you, do you, are there any celebrities right now that are following you? Do you know of any? Yeah. I mean, I have like, I have like great relationships with some people now that have like helped me a lot, like Megan Trainer and I got really close and she's helped me throughout like this whole time. She was actually like in a very, like a follower from the beginning, um, Venus Williams. Wow. Um, who else? Kelsey wow, Beth that's pretty Amy. huge. That's pretty yeah. crazy. That is. That's awesome. Like, I'm so happy for you. I love that I knew you first, doll. I knew you first <laughs> when you were back at Bravo. That is so I remember funny. when I when I met you too. You were like, "Wait, we tell did. me, tell the truth. You don't have to be. You could be we honest. Like, nice. what, how was I when you tell you the truth? You were really nice, and I told everyone that because there was a hundred percent people that were so mean to me. And really? Yeah, like people like would curse me out on the phone and stuff, but um. I won't say names like other Bravo celebrities. you're saying. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But you were like really, really nice. And it was just funny because we never met before, but you were like, I feel like I know I've met you. And I'm like, and I was like too nervous to say, no, we've never met, but I was just like, I was like, Oh really? And you're like, no, we've definitely met. And I was like, yeah. And then you were just, I was just sitting there while you're doing a podcast, but you were very nice. <laughs> oh, good. I'm so glad. And you could say if I was evil that day, it's fine. Sometimes I have a bad day, but I'm normally, I'm normally pretty fun. Everyone has a bad day, but I would tell you. I'm, I love I'm- when I meet someone and they're like, oh, I've met you before back in the day. And I'm like, how did that go? Like, how yeah. you- <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. Well, <laughs> speaking of jobs that you've had, um, you're now working with some major, major brands, um, to help with inclusivity. Right. So yeah. Victoria's secret, right. Are we working with pink and Victoria's secret and revolve? I mean, these are huge companies. Yeah. So, um, Victoria's secret pink, I'm their size consultant, um, and brand ambassador where I'm like helping them to expand their sizing. It was something they were already doing, wanted to do prior. And then they reached out to me to like help them because it's something that I like I'm passionate about so um it started a few months ago where they like relaunched their swim in size xxl which they never had before and then um hoping to you know help them increase past that so um I actually have a shoot with them this weekend and wow. um yeah it's been exciting working with them like I it's a lot of like me trying on things before it even goes into production so that I can really see if it's like fitting right. And, you know, they've been, they've been great. So um, that's very exciting. And then with Revolve, that's actually 
it's funny because that I said what that line is and it's Remy X Revolve and it's going to come out in the fall. But um, it came about because I made a realistic call about them basically being like, do better. Like, not like, I never like made these hauls like that were like really bashing other than probably like one or two. Like I always was very, really tried to show the good and the bad, not like you're horrible. Like more like I want to wear your brand or, you know, I want to wear stuff from you. So like, can you like try and just like, why is it so hard to not increase your sizing? Um, And from that, like, one video that I did like they reached out to my team like the next day and we we're like we want to do a line with Remy which is the reason that I'm so ex- like so excited about doing this line with them is because I, I didn't even have as many you know followers then and they just were like we want to do this which was awesome wait so the line would be exclusive to Revolve because like I want it at Envy as well so is this exclusive <laughs> just with wow. Revolve like how do I get these pieces for Envy this one's exclusive to Revolve. Okay. Um, because it's re- it's like, so they have, obviously they're like an online retailer where they have a bunch of different brands, but then they have like their own owned brand. So they're in-house designing it. Got so it. it's like their brand and it's Remy X Revolve. And then usually all their brands just go up to XL. So this one will be extra, extra small to 3X, hoping to obviously in the future, if it goes well, um, expand sizing. But um, yeah, it'll be, I'm. I, it's very much like, I would say just every piece and everything that like, I've always been a curvier girl and I've always wanted, I've always dressed the same or like, I've always wanted to dress. I definitely am like dress a little revealing. Like I like to wear sexy clothes. Like I like, I like what's on trend. And I feel like people think that like larger bodies just aren't interested in that. And it was always like frumpy clothes and bigger clothing. And it's just like, I want this to be everything that I've always like wanted that I couldn't find myself. Like, blazer suits and like um you know skirt sets and body suits and just like stuff I like and it'll just be right. that gives you the little cleavage that's still form right. fitting that right and and so that's kind of like is that what they're curating for you is that what Revolve is gonna yeah I'm I'm designing it like with them love and I this every single thing so I it's all basically like what I've you know chosen and then um yeah, it'll be, I'm excited for it to come out. Well, that's huge. That is huge. I'm so happy for you. I'm a huge Revolve shopper as well. Well, it's spring again, the perfect time for a refresh. So how about a change that makes you super comfortable and your home look good too? Enter Brooklinen. You deserve the best rest and Brooklinen has your comfort covered with a lineup of cozy essentials made for relaxation. Brooklinen, home of the internet's favorite sheets, was created in 2014 to give customers luxury hotel-level home essentials that don't break the bank. They offer everything from snuggly sheets to cozy towels and robes, loungewear, accessories, and so much more. By working directly with suppliers, Brooklinen cuts out the markups and passes those savings back to their customers. So you get their incredible products at a reasonable cost. First time trying Brooklinen, their best-selling luxe sheets are the perfect place to start, featuring a soft feel and a buttery smooth finish. You can also take Brooklinen's signature softness outside the home with their loungewear collection, featuring the softest tees, tanks, sweatshirts, joggers, and all other essential basics. If you need the extra nudge to purchase, check out the five-star reviews. Over 100,000 of them. Yes, you heard that right. 100,000 five-star reviews. So go to brooklinen.com and use promo code DISPLAY to get $20 off your purchase of $100 or more. That's B-R-O-O-K-L-I-N-E-N.com. Enter promo code DISPLAY for $20 off your purchase today. Brooklinen, the curators of comfort. No one likes waiting on a paycheck, especially when you've got bills due. Good thing there's Chime. Now you can get your paycheck up to two days earlier with direct deposit. That's up to two more days to save, pay bills, and generally just feel good about your money situation. Trust me, as a mom who runs a business and looks after her family, there's nothing better than getting the money you earned early. But Chime is more than just about getting paid early. It's also an award-winning mobile app, checking account, debit card, and optional savings account. So what are you waiting for? Hopefully not your paycheck. Get started with Chime today. 
Applying for a free account takes less than two minutes. Get started at chime.com slash Melissa. That's chime.com slash Melissa. Banking services and debit card provided by Bancorp Bank or Stride Bank NA members FDIC. Early access to direct deposit funds depends on the payer. Let's talk about life for a minute. Let's talk about your life. You just recently went to Coachella, right? A few weeks ago. Talk to me about it. What is it like? Do you know I've never, ever been? So like, give me an inside look of what it's like to be there. Horrible. Um, (laughs) I. I It looks like a big mosh pit of like people who are just bombed, if I'm being honest. Yeah, I like concerts and I like, I like, I kind of knew going into it, I guess I was just like, I festivals are different than concerts. Like this is like, and this is like the biggest. So this is a hundred something thousand people a day. And it's a million degrees because you're in the desert and it's just, you're sweating and you're like, I, yeah, I feel like you'd have fun if you're doing drugs or something. Like I went, I was there for, you know, work and stuff too. Like I was just trying to like hang with my friends and I was like, this is it. Like, this is what it is. I also was in VIP and I was like, this can't be VIP. So <laughs> I just was like, couldn't believe it. But what I, the, the reason everyone keeps talking about Coachella with me is because I, um, I had, I was like, I had, it was going to my like job there and just everything was going wrong for me. Like, it was just like, I was sweating and then I'm in the car and the guy went, did 16 turns and took us the wrong way. And I was so car sick and trying not to throw up. I ended up being like an hour late for the job, which was the reason I went there. And then my whole dress, um, which was from Revolve, like I sweat through the whole thing. So you could see my sweat and I was about to do, like, do videos and pictures and stuff. And then like my hair extensions fell out and it was oh, just oh after insane and like everything I can't even think that everything that could go wrong so there's a video that like went viral of me because I was with my sister like my poor sister who's just trying to like be calm she said she was so afraid of me at that moment because I was so silent and like I'm not a silent person and she was like scared I was gonna explode at any moment and um we were just sitting and I basically we were like we went into this cat, these little like bikes take you to, because it's so far, like you walk like an hour into the grounds. No one tells you that too. It's so far away from where you get dropped off. So there's like these little bikes that can take you closer. And we get on this bike as I'm like car sick and freaking out. And like, it just starts bouncing up and down. And my boobs were flying all over the place, like almost out of the dress. And I just was, we were laughing so hard. And then I just started sobbing, like crying. Like, I was just like, why am I here? Like, I just was like, this is just not for me. And I was like being contemplating doing it like I do with everything. And then I'm like, screw it. And then everyone was just like dying about it because it was just so real of like me just having a horrible time. I mean, it does not sound glamorous at all. Like you yeah. would think Coachella, I'm going VIP. I'm there with Revolve. Like there was zero glamour so there was like two separate things so like there was this like confused a lot of people but there's Coachella and then there's a million other parties and mini festivals that go on that have nothing to do with Coachella so Revolve Fest was its own thing that is not affiliated with Coachella that like I went with them but I went to Coachella for another job I I know a lot of people maybe had bad experiences with Revolve based on the stuff that happened but like I had a great time there like I did get in I got in on time and like if you got in on time you had a good time so me and my thank god for that because we had a great time at Revolve Fest it was the actual like giant festival because that was like private and more exclusive like the giant Coachella festival was what was horrible for me. Right. Right. And it sounds like, yeah, you're just, you're, if you're sweating and you, you felt, you were probably excited to go do this thing and you were, yeah. I, I, I could totally feel your pain on that. I'd actually like to see that TikTok of you like disheveled. Yeah, you got to see it. <laughs> it's probably so funny. Um, okay. And you just moved apartments. I know that you, you didn't like your old apartment. Was that the situation? Yeah, I was, it started from like all this started for me, like right after I moved. So I was in this like small studio and I was in Murray Hill for four years, which is like a very post-grad area, but it was like enough in time for me to get out, but I couldn't get out of my lease once it started. So I had like every day, like 50 boxes coming to my apartment, never even had room for a table. So I basically like, I ate, slept and filmed my videos and got like all my packages just in this one room and I couldn't get out of it for a year. So it just turned into this like, everyone knew I hated my apartment. So I just moved into a two bedroom in a different area of the city. And it's very exciting. 
<laughs> have you always lived in New York City? Were you like born and raised? So we were, I was born and raised on the Upper East Side. Um, my parents are from here. And then we actually, because of 9-11, a lot of families like moved out at the time and we had a house out in West Hampton. So we moved out there. We were only supposed to go for like a year and I ended up like going to school out in the Hamptons, which was super like unheard of at the time. Um, but yeah, now my parents are back in the city. They live here. I live here. And um, that's kind of where we all like meet up, I would say, out there. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Well, for all my Bravo peeps that are out there, talk to me a second. Do you watch any, uh, are you, which franchise do you love? Do you watch, do you watch Real Housewives of New Jersey? Do you watch? So I've watched New Jersey every, like every year, except I haven't watched this season because I've been so busy and don't even sleep. Um, but I, I watch, I need to catch up. My sister was calling me about it last night and I'm like, I'm not there yet. And now I'm like going on Melissa's podcast tomorrow and I need to know. Um, yeah. But <laughs> I watched like, I've, I've watched a little Summer House because I was on it in the beginning of the season. And I've watched, what do I watch on Bravo? I feel like I watch whatever it's on. Like that really is, those kind of shows really are my escape where I don't like think of things. So I feel like I don't need to be caught up on like even the season. I'll just watch the episode. I was watching Salt Lake City this year for the first time um and again because I like I did the like little Bravo show with them that live stream and I was like now I have to watch so I feel like it's like um I used to watch Beverly Hills I always I watched New York New York for a while um I watch kind of you know what it's it's you know it's different when you work there and you're like behind the scenes you're not watching it the same way I would say like the people at home are watching it because you're in there it's just it's different it almost ruins it for you a little bit. kind of did a little bit like it just was like it took like especially when I worked there and had to watch for certain reasons to know what was going on it like took away the fun for me but like I um I definitely I, from working there and then the people that were you know nice to me and then the people that weren't that also definitely um affected who I like watch and who I like now <laughs> because I saw them in real life and, but, you, and you know what they're like to meet in person and you know who's right. like crazy and who's normal but I could tell everyone when everyone asked me I'm like I Bravo is a lot of the stuff is pretty freaking real because it is. I hate when yeah. people ask me that. I'm like, no, no we are is. not one of those like networks. They don't even like when you fake something. Like it's, you're not right. allowed to fake, right? It's really real because I saw these people in like real time that were doing the, doing and acting the exact same way as on the show. So it's nothing really that I know that's different from what you would really know watching on TV. It's very real and it's, it's hysterical. Well, would you, would you want to spill the tea on who like the worst Bravo celebrity you've ever met was like, there's gotta be someone I she might have allowed. Just, she were, you're allowed. They might've just been having a bad day. Um, there's gotta be someone that you were like, wow, just not my cup of tea. Ram- Ramona, like, like literally like yelled at me on the phone and was like calling me Ronnie and was like, well, it was like freaking out at me for no reason didn't know who I was hung up called me again yelling at me hung up called again and apologized I'm like ah, I don't even know you're but like I'm see this is real this show yeah, is real. That's <laughs> why I'm like, this is exactly real like it's so funny it's crazy and now they're doing there's like the new ultimate girls trip with all of the new oh I watched that whole thing with my mom um, oh okay okay I, watched, I loved that that was yeah. good that was good. And now they're doing a new one with like the ex-wives with like the Dorinda's and the Jill's and like the Brandy. So that should be like, that's going to be some riveting TV. I'll tell you that. Um, it, it's actually really funny. Okay. Well, what's next for you? Like, tell me what's, what's, what do we look forward to with you? What's next? What's, what's in the plan? When Anything? people ask me that, it's so hard because I'm like, right now obviously focused on the bigger like the revolve and the Victoria's Secret because that's like a right now thing but I think that it's just a lot of like I'm definitely like f- figuring out having conversation like looking into tv stuff so that's been the thing that's been interesting for me I think a lot of what I talk about and stuff too is like mental health related and I kind of want to do a little more in that space I think it's really interesting how people in this I always said I was like that'll never be me but people in the public eye and stuff like how they do get depressed or they can't handle these things or whatever and I think it's interesting that a lot of these creators in the space like go to each other and vent about it but there's no one there like helping us or there to like guide us in a way and I think that that's like 
something I want to like talk about more. Um, but you know, I have the fashion. I think down the line, I would love to have my own line. That was genuinely everything that I would want instead of just being guided by like, you know, you have to be guided by what the brand wants to. If I could have a brand of my own, I would want it to go to as big of a size as it could. So, um, that would be probably more down the line for me. But I think that there's a lot, I mean, like everyone, like a lot of people want me to do comedy or live shows and things like that. And I was like looking into doing that. And then I was like, well, everyone's doing that right now. Like maybe this isn't my time this second. Like, I feel like I'm just trying, I don't want to do too much at once. And I feel like that's what a lot of people do when things start. I have to start this brand and I need to do this and this. And I'm like, I just want to like really just see what comes my way because every day there's something new that's like, a new opportunity. And I'm like, wow, this is crazy. So I just kind of want to keep going with it right now. Well, I think that's really smart. And I think whatever you're doing is right. And when you, when you jump in too fast, it it comes off, you know, like you need to really want it or really want whoever wants to work with you has to be like a genuine connection. So whatever you're doing, you're doing it right. And I applaud you for all of your body, like just the way that you speak about your body and the way that you're so open and honest and real with it. It's really, it's refreshing. Um, and there needs to be more people like you out there on TikTok. And and honestly, you're really, you're really amazing. It's awesome. You guys know I am very into treating yourself, but especially your mental health. Life can be overwhelming and many people are burned out without even knowing it. Symptoms can include lack of motivation, feeling helpless or trapped, detachment, fatigue, and more. We associate burnout with work, but that's not the only cause. Any of our roles in life can lead us to feel burned out and better help online therapy wants to remind you to prioritize yourself. Talking with someone can help you figure out what's causing stress in your life. BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist. So you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy, and you can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. On display with Melissa Gorga listeners, get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash Gorga. That's betterhelp.com slash Gorga. Hey, everyone. This is Heather Dubrow, and do I have some exciting news for you. We are launching a variety of new episodes that are going to have amazing special guests, some of my close friends, and so much more. It's going to be really fun, and we're going to get to hear from fans, new friends, and get an inside look of my world. We're really excited for you to listen and join in for Heather Dubrow's World on Podcast One. Episodes drop on Thursdays and Fridays. Tune in on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Okay. So listen, we're going to do, I always end every one of my podcasts with a little episode of girls with Gorga. Okay. Super fun. Just rapid fire questions. You just give me your answer. Okay. Um, you ready? Yes. Okay. Girls with Gorga. Here we go. Remy ready. Your first celebrity crush. Um, Jonah Hill. Oh, <laughs> Okay. 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 Your favorite nineties song. Um, I'm not a girl, Britney Spears. I'm not a girl, not yet a woman. Is that, that's that right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's a good song. No one has ever said that. A lot of people say Britney when I say not. Because I was thinking of it the the other day, someone asked me and I was like, oh, I loved that song. (laughs) Okay. What was your biggest regret? What's your biggest regret? Okay, someone also asked me this yesterday on my Instagram and I said, I, I, if I did, I, I know this sounds like lame, but I don't have regrets because I, I enjoy learning from my mistakes. And I think I've had a lot of them. And I think that I, you don't learn unless you, you know, you have some of those. So I can't say I regret anything because I wouldn't be where I am now. Facts. Okay. Best decision you've ever made. Um, making TikToks. Yes. I, I, I think that's fair. Uh, what's your pet peeve? Like what drives you crazy? Oh my God. I, I do have a lot, but, um, was also thinking about this yesterday, which was weird. I hate when this is like a, is this a pet peeve? I don't know, but I hate when friends get boyfriends and then just go off the grid. 
oh, I had so many of those like in my 20s. They would just fall off. Like, I just think it's okay to like also hang out with your friends too. And like, I, I think that that just happened to me now for like 27 years because it's, I've never had a boyfriend before and I've, and all of my friends have usually. So I just like, it's just interesting to see people come and go. And then when they break up with them, they come back. And it's just like, that's like a big pet peeve of mine. I get that. Um, well then this is going to lead into this next question. Worst date. What's your worst date? Have you been on a really bad date before? I went on a date that I thought was good. And then, and I have a lot, I have a lot of guy friends. Like, I'm just like, I will never say I'm a guy's girl, but like, I have a lot of guy friends. I have a lot of girlfriends too. But I remember, like, I always like post my guy friends and stuff. And I remember I went on this date and I was like, thought it really went well. And then um, we were like, he texted me like the, the, a few days after or something at like 2 a.m. trying to hang out. And I was like, absolutely not. And he was booty like, call. he was booty. Yeah. Calling. And he said something like, well, when you have like, clearly you're, you're a whore or something because you hang out with all these guys all the time and post it or something crazy. Oh, I was like, what? wait, first of all, I would never, ever, ever want to be with someone that was so afraid that I had guy friends because that's like, like a red flag in the first place. Like, I, I don't think that's weird of me. And second of all, that definitely was like, such, I was just like, are you kidding me? Um, so I really have not been on a lot of dates in my life, but that one was a little traumatizing because I was like, okay, this is why I don't go on dates. I find it interesting. You've never had a serious boyfriend either, ever. Everyone finds it interesting. I mean, I definitely have like hooked up with a lot of people and I enjoyed the casual situations, but like I, right, it's, it, I would have wanted a boyfriend in time, but right now I'm like actually genuinely think I, it wouldn't be good for me. I think I need to like still I feel like focus on myself I don't even have enough time for anything so I think a boyfriend right now wouldn't help but um yeah I don't really know I I actually do I've asked a lot of my guy friends because I've grown up with all these guys and I'm like why do you think like and they're just like I I think I put out a lot of that casual friend girl energy too I think I'm also clearly you know it's interesting because ever since I started on social media no I used to have guys talk like I would flirt a lot more and talk to guys and not one guy since I started on social media slides into my dms like I have girls slide into my dms all the time asking if I'm a lesbian and saying like do you want to hang like that's very I appreciate that but like no guys and it's like think about it I'm not talking about like sexy stuff I'm talking about how I've gained weight and talking about all this real stuff and whatever and when I ask my friends they're like I think it's just that you're intimidating and I'm like I don't know if it's that I think that that's like kind of like BS. And I think if a guy wants something, they'll slide in or they'll ask for it. But I just don't know right now. No one's interested in it. It is sliding in. Well, when, when he does, then we're, we're going to be very interested in hearing like what he has to say. I mean, it's not always the best when they slide in the DM. So don't, well, I just mean in general, reaching out, like I am on the apps. I like, okay. okay. I try, but I just think that, right. It's just like, I don't know. I'm not. And and it does come in phases too, but I feel like when it comes in phases, a lot of the time, it's just like, oh, this person wants to hook up. Like it's always been casual for me. It's not serious. serious. And and then some of my friends have always had a boyfriend. It's like boyfriend after boyfriend after boyfriend. So I'm like, I guess I'm just not that boyfriend girl, but like hopefully one day. Oh, yes, of course it's going to happen. Um, first concert you've ever been to. Um, jingle ball with like my Ooh, family. <laughs> love going to Jingle Ball. That's so fun. Okay. Something about you, which I feel like we know so much already, but give me something about you that would surprise us. Ooh, I don't even know. Like something that you'd be like, you know what? You guys have no idea that I like to suck on my big toe at night. Like something that would surprise us that we don't know about you. It's <laughs> really crazy you know, I say, I really say everything. You um, know. That's really hard. Like I literally was like, like yesterday, I'm like, guys, like my TMJ is so bad, and now I'm going to get tested for sleep apnea and this. And like I literally tell everyone every detail. You talk about your gyno appointments, like it's all out there. I'm like I sometimes just need to shut up, but I, I that's a good one. I need to think about that. I don't have an answer. Okay, what's <laughs> your favorite late night snack? So like, if you're on the couch at night watching TV, what are you eating? So I'm not a snacker, which is the issue. Um, I like like meals. So I feel like I'm not really a late night snacker at all. But like once it gets like later at night or like dinner time, I want like a big meal. Like I want an Italian big meal or something, which is like a problem. You want pasta. (laughs) You want pasta. I want pasta. Got it. Okay. What was your first job? First job? 
Bravo. Oh, it was Bravo. Okay. Yeah. Um, what is your favorite TV show to binge watch? Like, what are you watching right now? If you're binge watching anything? Um, Love Island. And um, right now I'm watching, because I never knew it existed, Are You the One from MTV. And I, I'm really big on like the dating shows that are like so stupid that like it makes me so happy. Love Island, is that the Lachey's? No, Love Island. Is, I mean, I watch all of those too, but Love Island UK is actually, it's a UK one. They have a US one, but it's not as good. But the UK one's like the best show I've ever watched. Okay, but there's like it. 50 episodes a season. Like it's crazy. I get all my TV recommendations. So Joe and I, just because I asked this question on my podcast, I'm always like, oh, wait, this one said to watch this. So now I'm taking, I'm writing notes. Like I have a ton of shows to start watching. Okay. I always end with, if the day is all about you, how do you treat yourself? Like, what is the day like? Um, I would get a massage and go to a spa. I feel like that's the one thing that can calm me down and take me off of my phone. Um, I would... I feel like that's my one thing I really do for myself. What else? Go to a nice restaurant. Good. A lot of people tell me massages. So I love it. Like they're really? like a lot of people say that they just want to like relax and get a massage. I just think that I don't even know how to relax at this point. And like, I'm always doing something. Um, so I think anything, which m- not many things can get me off my phone. So to be somewhere that like makes me really present is like, just always after the fact makes me feel good like maybe like even like at this week I was like I need to relax I need to do something maybe I'll go to like hot yoga tomorrow and there's like a new place where I live that I want to try like that would be like a fun thing for me to take me a little to get myself to go but then after I do it I'm always happy I love it well listen Remy this has been amazing thank you so much for your time today thank you're you. a breath of fresh air in the fashion world you really are you're a breath thank of fresh air in the fashion world um, continue staying true to yourself and to your audience because everyone appreciates it. And I really wish you nothing but success with all your business ventures. Um, hopefully we catch up at the next Bravo event or something. Definitely. No, everyone, so please be sure to check her out. She's hilarious on Instagram and on TikTok. Um, you're Remy Bader on everything, right? Yeah, it's Remy Bader, my name. Okay. It was so awesome talking to you. You're so much fun. Uh, thank you. Thank you for doing this. You too. Thank you. Okay. Bye, honey. Bye. Spend less time in the laundry room and more time doing the things you love. Introducing the Samsung Smart Top Load Laundry Pair, now available at Lowe's. The washer's large capacity means you can fit more in every load. Plus, its super speed setting washes a full load in only 28 minutes. Shop the smart washer that will streamline laundry day, backed by Lowe's Price Promise. Based on using super speed on a normal cycle with an 8-pound load, terms apply. See Lowe's.com slash price promise for details. U.S. only.